Uh, my name is Herb Levy, Herbert Levy. Uh, I, uh, I was not a ground soldier as such. I was serving with the 9th Air Force, 9th Engineer Command, actually, who were those who uh, found, sighted, built, maintained airstrips all over France. Of course, we started off in Normandy, and uh, that's the background that I, I'm bringing to the table before you now. And number one, I guess I should say I'm an architect. Uh, I wasn't when I came to France. I was all of 18 years of age. Uh, uh, probably not as smart as I thought I was. Uh, in England, in early May, uh, I, with a company of soldiers, was sent to a secure camp where part of our duties were to make models of what we thought were landing beaches, but they were in such pieces that we couldn't tell one piece from another, and we were total, uh, totally isolated from our friends who were doing something similar in another place. So we had no idea what these models were going to be. We assumed when they were put together, they showed the beaches, particularly in my case, Utah Beach. We were in a secure camp where we weren't allowed to leave the camp. There were no passes, no leave. Uh, our first news, actually, uh, that something was happening was on the second when we started to see the, the ground troops being gathered up and taken off in trucks. We knew, obviously, something was at hand. At the time, I uh, was aware that the invasion was about to take place in order to cover myself from my parents and my girlfriend. I remember writing about four different letters predating them and giving them to someone to mail for me so that the family would not know that I had landed in, in France. And, but not until early on the morning of the 6th of June did loudspeakers come on and tell us that we had landed and that uh, as far as we were concerned from here on it was a real show. Uh, I do remember on that day we were issued clo special clothing. It was a regular uniforms but they were covered with some waxy material. It was a fear that the Germans were going, possibly going to use uh, gas. And these were anti-gas uniforms. I can only remember that they were so waxy and so stiff that if you took them off, the pants would stand up by themselves with nobody in them. They didn't last very long. We very quickly got rid of them. Uh, actually, we got on board an LCI uh, on the 8th of June. Uh, the LCI was a, land, a large landing craft with two gangplanks in the front which were forced out onto the beach as the ship rode up on the beach and infantry could go down the gangplanks onto the beach. Uh, however, when it, after a one night trip over to France and so having arrived there uh, it wasn't until the D plus four that I actually put a foot on the beach. We were off the beach one day with the shelling and everything going on. We weren't hit. Uh, but we did see ships being sunk, some on purpose. I'm sure some of the infantrymen have talked about the ships that were brought in as artificial, to make an artificial harbor. Uh, it was quite a sight to see. And uh, when we landed, I was told that I was not part of a unit, but I was there merely as a replacement, which didn't sound too good. Uh, I know that we landed at exit two from Utah Beach. Our orders were to head to the high land and above it to an emergency landing strip that was supposed to be scraped out at the beach by the 834th uh, Engineer Aviation Battalion. And at that time, our uh, duty was supposedly to camouflage that installation uh, to keep it out of view of the uh, Luftwaffe. As replacements, of course, we were nothing to anybody. And on our way, suddenly, I think there were about eight of us, were taken by a graves registration unit. And our first duty there was to help not gather bodies up so much as preparing them for burial. Uh, it wasn't a very pleasant job. 
Uh, I can tell you that I probably vomited straight for two days. Also learned how to drink Calvado so I could go to sleep at night. And uh, we, that lasted for two days and finally they had enough of us. And we moved on by foot to wherever we were heading. And when we were grabbed by the 326th Airborne Engineers, uh, who needed help building a Bailey Bridge across the Douve River, which is one of the two little rivers before Carantan. There was still another small river, and I don't remember the name of it, that had to be crossed. And when we got to the other side, they suddenly heard that I was also a demolition man. So I was sent out to look for landmines and try and clear a, a path. And we were on our way to Saint Pierre. Uh, finally, the outfit that I was assigned to, two weeks later, we found them. They had just arrived from England. And we never were able to find out how come we replacements were out there weeks before the actual unit landed, but nobody was prepared to tell us. By mid-July, we built in one period of time 26 airstrips in Normandy, nine of which were the only ones that were planned on the sites that they were, they were built on. But there were a total of 17 additional strips that were found by the small groups that I belonged to, or m among others, uh, in beachhead areas that were all put into action during that period of time. It wasn't until we got near San Lo that we finally got inside and slept under a roof. And I remember it was there on the 20th of July that we heard about the assassination attempt on Hitler. And uh, on the 26th and 27th, we actually witnessed the bombing of San Lo. We had the smoke drifting over our heads, uh, watched and counted airplanes, some of them that were being shot down from higher altitudes, falling and crashing into lower bombers. San Lo was the beginning of, of the breakout. Beyond that, I'm open to questions. Wow. Uh, the first impression is hard to say. Uh, yeah, you la landed on the beach and it was a mess and uh, it just was surreal. They're, they're, they'd never seen anything like it. Uh, I don't think I'll ever see anything like it again, I hope. Have you had contact with civil Français? Yes, we were, I would say we were constantly in contact with them. And the civilians themselves came out. We were very warmly greeted, I have to say that. Uh, maybe too warmly greeted. I may have had too much wine and Calvados. Probably arriving at a German work camp. Not an extermination camp, but a work camp, which didn't mean that the prisoners weren't dying. But that wasn't their reason for being there. They were there to work. It was in Nordhausen, and one of the things I had to do was help get the prisoners that we could move uh, out of the area. But that's, that's something I will never forget, and that I, I know that that was, that was one of the important things that really stuck with me. En tant que soldat, est-ce que vous étiez au courant des camps de concentration? No, not, not in the beginning, certainly. No, I, I, I don't think I, I knew anything about them uh, until, until it broke with the horror that the, I guess the whole world got at the same time. I don't know that I ever want to see one again. Even as a memorial today, I, I don't think I could handle it. Et euh, comment avez-vous vécu la victoire? I think the life that came back with victory was a life that Maybe I never anticipated because the almost three years that I was in the service, I certainly didn't experience it. Uh, it was a life that proved to be a normal life. Uh, you weren't constantly being ordered uh, until your marriage. Uh, and uh, you went back to living like you thought people lived in the way maybe you lived before even though you might have been too young to realize. Uh, as I say, I was not, I didn't volunteer for it. I was drafted, <coughs> as most people were. But uh, it, it was a return was to some, it was new and it was great. And I think this is why 
so many of the American men and the few women who were ineligible at the time uh, went back to school. A lot of, I don't know that I'd ever gone back to college if I hadn't gone into the service. Uh, I, I often thought that I was just too young to have been there in the first place. Et comment vous sentiez-vous en retournant aux États-Unis? I felt wonderful. I guess I missed my family, missed my girlfriend, whom I ultimately married. Uh, it was a war where, where there were two sides, and we were on the right side, and the Germans were on the wrong side, and their allies. Uh, the first time I was in Normandy after the war was in 1963, uh, which time the American cemetery was uh, finished. Uh, I, I get very emotional. Uh, I forget the names of some of my buddies who are buried there, and yet I just go back knowing that they're there. I know that today there is a German cemetery there at Lacombe. Now, I'm sure there are more Germans than Americans, but I know that I would have the feeling that I would want to go back there and see them too, although certainly at one point I never would have wanted to. Uh, I was doing a, a paper, while I was doing it, a little article appeared in the paper about an American archaeologist who recently in the area had uncovered the remains of three German soldiers, identifying them by their tags, by their uniforms, of course, their bodies were deteriorated. And I thought to myself, you know, I could have been the guy who dumped those three German soldiers in the ground. And uh, it sort of gave me a start. Things change. I have made friends with Germans. I don't know that I've made friends with any German Nazis. I, that, but uh, I have some very good friends in Germany that I've visited and are very close to, uh, as a matter of fact. And, I got a letter, an email after my wife passed away from a German couple that we met who announced to me that they were coming to visit her grave. And they did. They came here from Germany just to see it. They went up and placed some flowers there. You have to think of what human beings are like when something like that happens. Uh, Est-ce que vous vous considérez aujourd'hui comme un héros? No. No. Not at all. Uh, I, I did what I was supposed to do. I thought I did it right, and I don't know, I have a beautiful French medal hanging in my library, people admire it, uh, and I, it is beautiful, it's prettier than any American one I might add, but uh, no, I, I don't consider myself to be a hero. Why is it important for you to meet young people? Well, Let's put it this way. I guess at the time I was doing this, I was a young people too. Uh, I probably didn't have any more idea as to why I was there. Uh, I think in those days, uh, unfortunately, unlike today, there were two sides to the war. There were us and them. Uh, today, I think the things that we read in the newspapers are, are so mixed up. And I think it's important that uh, that young people realize that this is not just a, a goodies and a baddies thing. Et enfin, quel message voulez-vous qu'on retienne de ce que vous venez de nous raconter? What would I like you to remember? It, it's, it's true, there's a, it was an unfortunate point in our lives. Uh, thankfully, it, it hasn't happened on that scale again. Uh, but I think that uh, the more you know about what happened, whether you're interested in it or not, the more apt you are to be able to say, uh, it ain't going to happen again. In my lifetime, I have found out that humor is much nicer than, I don't know, depression. I also found out you can get further with humor. I, I do it all the time, and I just can't help it. It's my, it's my nature. <laughs>